Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And today we are going to address one of the most fundamental questions of Parashri Jyotish. Why is the Navamsha chart more important than the Lagna chart? The D9 chart and we have the D1 chart. Why is it that this chart, this specific chart, not only it is given more importance, uh, the, the most importance among all the divisional charts, but it is also given more importance than the Lagna chart itself. Why in the universe is it? Why, why, why? Just because some point system says, no, that's not the reason. We will try to discuss about it in short hopefully all right and as usual if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me regarding any of your divisional charts the navamsha especially you can go down to my description section of the videos where you will find the link to my website and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and today we must find him because we are going to discuss about the Navamsha chart, which is the most important chart. Well, we all know what the Navamsha chart is. But do we actually know it? Many times people keep asking these questions. I'm very sure if you tell somebody that you know astrology, then out of 10, 9 people will ask you this question. Oh my, this planet is exalted in Lagna, debilitated in the Navamsa. What does this mean? Or opposite. That is debilitated here and it is exalted in the Navamsa. Or in Navamsa, this planet goes from this sign to that sign. Yes, it, it stays in the same uh, fire sign or air sign, which means suppose somebody has moon in Aquarius. Then in Navamsha also, if moon is in Gemini or Libra, then it's like the same, uh, it's, it's the same air sign. So there are many questions which people ask. So today we will discuss why in the universe is Navamsha so important? Why? Just, why is it just because that it's another chart? It is related to the ninth house? Well, yes, of course. But what is the deeper meaning of this? So what is the Navamsha basically? Navamsha basically means studying your spiritual life in detail. And yes, Navamsha also, they say that is related to marriage. We will also come to marriage later. <laughs> it's not the kind of marriage that you think or the kind of marriages that happen these days. But let's go to go to marriage later. Let's first discuss about what the Navamsha is. So Navamsha gives us an indication of our spiritual life. But how? Why? The, the planets, the placements in the Navamsha will tell us what kind of dedication, determination and commitments we had when we were practicing a particular spiritual path. Or it could be more than one also. In the past, in our past lives, that's the sum total. For example, sun. What does sun represent in the Navamsha? Well, sun can represent many things. But primarily sun in the Navamsha represents what was your... See, sun basically shows commitment. Because sun is the natural Atma Karak. Yes. So how much commitment you had towards your spiritual path? When you, when you said that I will chant these many number of mantras, these many rounds, or I will read the Gita every day, did you do it? If yes, then maybe your son will be well placed in the Namamsha. But suppose you did not, then maybe it's not in a very good shape there. So, if you try to see and analyze yourself, you will realize, then what is moon in the Navamsha? 
moon in the navamsha will tell you how much emotionally you are connected to god now somebody may think oh, how is it possible to connect to god emotionally because i don't see him well even duryodhan would say this in the mahabha duryodhan and company once shakuni told him that um, uh, they were discussing about krishna and bhishma was also telling him that krishna is god and but duryodhan was like ah he may be somebody but definitely he is not god i don't think so <laughs> so it's not that somebody has to be there physically in front of you only then you will get that you know feeling of ecstasy or something like that so moon in the navamsha will show how much emotional fulfillment you had in your spiritual path or how much were you into internally because sun is externally externally you are chanting mantras you are doing so many things but how much dedication you are having from your inside are you also trying to think and meditate and just be with it or you are just doing it all right that's what moon represents what does venus represent in the navamsha venus venus and venus all the questions are related to mercury and venus well what is venus in the navamsha venus represents the pleasure which you get when you see the form of god yes <laughs> that's it that's what venus is venus has to do with looks so when you go to vrindavan when you visit radha madan mohan temple or when you visit banke bihari temple how do you see do you just see oh it's just another sum or you're like yes 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 is banke bihari <laughs> so what what is your consci consciousness when you are taking darshan and how do you take darshan do you see from the top to the bottom or do you see from bottom ideally you should see from bottom but we do the opposite we directly see the eyes and we go down <laughs> what's mercury mercury in the navamsha is an indication of how much effort did you put to understand the spiritual subject matter how much how much in the universe did you try then what is saturn 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 how much austerity did you do for maintaining your spiritual commitments fasting doing things even if you don't like fasting on ekadashis not taking grains on ekadashis fasting on special days like janmashtami or ramnavami how many how much austerity did you do yes the, the, these are the planets what does jupiter represent jupiter represents in the navamsha how much guidance did you take from your guru when it comes to spiritual matters when it came actually because this we are, we are all talking of the future of the past here let's not forget it or you could also say in this life because maybe if you are watching this video you would have lived right 15 20 30 years 40 years yes and rahu and ketu wow how many boundaries did you break rahu ketu represents boundaries how many boundaries did you break or did you maintain when it came to your spiritual practices that is what the planets in the navamsha represents and when we do those things properly then they say the blessings of the navamsha is there why does parashara say that if a planet is exalted in uh, d1 and then it's debilitated in d9 that it's of no use why does parashara say that can you imagine saying like that or forget exaltation debilitation even to say that the planet is powerless or useless 
I mean, why? Because suppose uh, Venus is very well placed in your Lagna chart, then you are very attractive or you are attracted to attractive people and maybe attractive people get attracted to you because of your attraction. <laughs> But what is the use of that attraction if you are not attracted to God? What is that use? What is the use of that attraction? Because in Srimad Bhagavatam it is said, the eyes which do not delight in seeing the form of God, they are like the eyes of the peacock. Have you seen peacock's feather? You know, not, not the eyes, sorry, it's, it's called pumes or fumes, you know, the Peacock's feather has big eyes, but the eyes can't see actually. Yes. So the eyes are considered to be useless. All beauty, all attraction is considered to be useless if we are not able to appreciate the form of God. Jupiter, guidance. You take guidance on finance, on education. On family, marriage, astrology, everything. And when it comes to your spiritual life, no guidance, zero guidance, no guidance of the Guru, zero, not even interested. Then what is the use of your so called guidance on finance and education, materialistic subject matter, marriage, astrology, horoscope matching? All are simply a sheer waste of time. As Bhagavatam says, Shrama Evahi Kevalam. That's the clear statement from the Shema Bhagavatam. Shrama Evahi Kevalam means you have simply not waste, you did not waste time, you did useless endeavor. Wasting time is like, okay, I'm not doing anything, just time is going. But imagine I go and break 20 stones. Such a useless endeavor, right? So Bhagavatam says that is like a useless endeavor. So Mercury, you're studying, you, you can talk on politics, you can talk on different languages, so many things you know. What why why your country's economy is going down? Why the world economy is going down? Why automobile industry is going down? Which political party is going to win elections? Will some country stay in some union or some, you know, some collaboration? Which group will uh, flourish? Which group, group will suffer? Everything you know, that's from the Lakna chart. But do you know the truths which Krishna has spoken in the Bhagavad Gita? Do you know? Or in the Bible, whatever Jesus has spoken. Are you aware of that? Or in the Quran, whatever Muhammad has, uh, had said, are you aware of that? Well, maybe you are only interested in the filthy, disgusting gossip of this world. And that is why your Mercury is suffering. Because you know everything, but still you don't know anything. Because... You know everything of this world, but you don't know the origin of that. Yes. And that's the, that's the same with Venus. Preman jana churita bhakti vilochane na. That's the verdict of the Brahma Samhita. Preman jana churita bhakti vilochane na. Means when the eyes are tainted with the ointment of love, only then you can see God. Otherwise, many times people say, if God exists, why doesn't he... Ladi appear in front of me and prove it. Well, he appeared in front of Ravan, in front of Duryodhan, in front of Dushasan, in front of Shakuni, in front of all these crooks that you know. But they never believed. They thought Ravan used to say, ah, who is this Ram? And he's just a useless fellow. He's a Bihari. One Vasi he used to say. Just roaming in the forests. Yeah, that's what he used to say. Duryodhana would say Krishna is a Mayavi. He's just, just like doing some filthy, disgusting magic. All right. So everybody talks of Saturn. Everybody talks of, you know, Mercury, money. Everybody talks of, you know, Rahu, Ketu. 
but how much substance is there when it comes to your spiritual path so long story cut short whatever is in the lagna is for your material or you consider at an external level is only going to give you ultimate fulfillment if the navamsa is supporting which means it's like saying okay you have these these things externally but now you use it for spirituality only then you can attain fulfillment yes that's over <laughs> class over <laughs> otherwise if you have great things there and all the crap here it's a waste of time shrama eva hi keva so now many people will think oh i have this planet debilitated in navamsha will i die or i will perish i will never get married i will be bankrupt i will be in poverty i will have heart attack i will have cancer these kind of questions people ask because people are so much fearful sometimes in fact it's so funny sometimes people ask me questions and uh, i say yeah, yeah this is the answer and wish you all the best good luck and when i say them good luck then people uh, they ask me back why are you saying good luck sir will i die mai marunga kya sir good luck kyu bol rahe hai that's the problem you see the, the situation of kaliyuga is so precarious that you can't even say good luck because if you say good luck they think that maybe we are hinting there some disaster which is coming so please be prepared okay you are going to die so hold on so now what to do if these play if the placements are not good so what should you do should you just leave everything well ultimately it's destiny right we anyways can't change anything well you cannot change your past you cannot do that all the sutras and mantras and tantras and shrutis and smith is nothing no remedy no gemstone nothing can change your destiny of the past but the way you use your free will today now is going to decide what you get as your destiny in the future this means whatever you do now will shape your future destiny so there you see destiny is under your control not the past but the future is under your control so therefore if you have a bad or a terrible or a disgusting or a weak or a useless navamsha many people say my navamsha is useless my navamsha is disgusting my navamsha is terrible <sighs> no problem hold on do the spiritual practices and your navamsha will improve and then you will realize the verses of the brahma samhita preman jana churita bhakti vilochane na <laughs> yes otherwise you will just be running over oh will i meet my boyfriend my girlfriend will i get money will i get this will i get that will i get property will i get so many things you will get or lose but there's something which if you don't get you will lose it for all and if if some if and if that is the thing which you get you will have nothing to lose because that is permanent that is eternal that is sat chit ananda so we have our families we have our jobs we have our businesses we have our education we have our marriages we have our children parents everybody but in the race of life let us not forget why we are running at all what is the end goal what is the destination that should be very clear and then when we do spiritual practices every day morning or evening and we maintain healthy connection with our guru and with our god brothers or god sisters and with the spiritual community with our spiritual friends only then our navamsha will give us good results and good results doesn't mean 
Oh, my seventh Lord is exalted in Lagna and debilitated in D1. That means the Navamsha will save my marriage, right? That's not what the Navamsha is for. What is the use of a great seventh house or a great seventh Lord if the Navamsha is not good? And at the end, as I said in the beginning, why in the universe is the Navamsha also called a chart of marriage? Why? Because if you see the seventh house, it is placed nine, uh, 11th from the ninth house, if you go. So essentially your gain of dharma, the gain from your spiritual activities is in your seventh house. So that means if somebody has a happy married life, the person has had been very spiritual, right? That's the conclusion many people will draw from this statement. Well, you are you are correct if you make that conclusion, but it is not the kind of happy life that you see in, in today's uh, society. You, you will see many people in the materialistic society, they will do zero spirituality, but they will still be very happy. Why? Because they are now simply reaping the good uh, results of their past deeds. But they are not actually married. They are just living like animals. They are just uh, doing no spiritual practices. They are just getting up at 9, 8, 8.30 in the morning. I know so many people. Then they will go to the office. They will work like donkeys. Yes, the boss will be hitting. Hey, do this, do that. Or they will be hitting on somebody. Do this, do that. Or I will throw you out. I will kick you out. You are fired. Yes. And then they will have lunch. I don't know what they eat, in, eat during lunch. After lunch, they will come home. They will watch the TV. IPL, GPL, CPL, DPL. So many PLs. <laughs> yes, cricket, football, hockey, news, BJP, Congress, India, Japan, Pakistan, Germany. So many things. And then in the night, they will order some food with some... Uh, online you know app very interesting apps these days yes and then a door in the doorbell a man will come and say ting tong this is your food your food is ready there's your food enjoy yes and then oh i forgot the ice cream how about going to the nearby ice cream store at 11 pm in the night yes oh my god what about netflix did I just miss it? Yes, what about Game of Thrones? What about... So many. <laughs> so this is like the lifestyle of dogs and cats and animals. This is animal life. This is not married life. This is not human life. What do you speak of married life? Married life is very far. Married life means when two people, a man and a woman, are committed together and doing spiritual practices together. That's what married life is. Either you are a brahmachari, a celibate, Brahmachari doesn't mean one who does not indulge with the opposite sex. Brahmachari is a person who, who focuses on Brahman. Brahman Achar means on spirit, on divinity, on God. Or you are a Grihastha. You are married and you are doing spiritual practices. Now sleeping till 8, 9, getting up at 4 or 4.30 maximum. <laughs> All parties, alcohol, meat, chuck it. Enough of it. So now, if that is how your married life was going, then it doesn't matter where your seventh house is. Your, your, the end goal of your life is just simply materialistic pleasure. And very soon, you, all your efforts will be baffled by this material nature when old age strikes you. Have you seen old people? Yes. When I say old, I don't mean... 70, 80 or 90. Old can be even a 20 year old who is frustrated. What is old age basically? Frustration of not being able to do things which you want. Because your body doesn't support. And then when old age comes, you will realize you cannot eat that uh, delicious steak of meat anymore. Yes, that... That beautiful glass of red wine is not the your body can't tolerate it anymore. Yes, your stomach is not in your control. 
your your genitals have surrendered because you cannot have sex again you have to exchange your genitals with some genitals of some animals monkeys chimpanzees dogs or cats or somebody else because your your genitals have surrendered we have both uh, again <laughs> so when old age comes all your efforts will be baffled nobody will be there with you that time except the blessings of your guru <laughs> all right so let us use our body properly when we were when we are young so that we don't have to die a pathetic and a miserable death and live a terrible old age have you seen people in their old age nobody is there they're just sitting and watching tv and they're ruining their lives let us not be like that and as gradually time progresses let us increase the quantity and quality of our spiritual practices and let us do full time spirituality once we cross 45 50 55 and then at the end of your life let's sit somewhere in vindavan or in ayodhya or in mathura or any any other place could be jerusalem could be makkah or could be the vatican and let us pass the remaining days of our life remembering the divine that is how the navamsha will help us not by searching filthy disgusting useless remedies on navamsha there are no remedies and there will be no remedies and there can be no remedies except for doing spiritual practices and especially reading texts like the gita and i'm very happy that so many people have started reading the gita after watching my uh, gita videos and monday or tuesday when i uploaded the new video i saw in uh, 48 to 72 hours there was around 1000 views and i was like wow 1000 people have seen that video great all right so congratulations if you have a great navamsha and don't panic don't worry don't cry don't die if you have a bad navamsha start wherever you are now and then your navamsha will improve and you will make spiritual progress including everyone else and me also all right thank you very much for your time and as usual if you are new to the channel please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me then please go down to the description section of my videos where you will find the link to my website and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will definitely find him all right thank you very much